Nigeria too has been deepening partnerships with African nations, and this relationship has now crossed a new milestone, especially in the economic sector. India-Africa trade has surpassed $100 billion. New Delhi is now among the top five investors on the continent. The announcement was made by Union Minister Kirti Vardhan Singh at an annual India-Africa business enclave in New Delhi. On the trade and economic front, India's bilateral trade with Africa has crossed the magical figure of 100 billion US dollars. In 2024-25, compared to 56 US dollars in 2019 and 2020. They said America controlled lithium. They said no one else could break into the supply chain. They said the US had locked the future in its grip, but they were wrong. Because now, in the deserts of Africa and the labs of India, a new alliance is quietly evolving one that could shatter America's lithium monopoly forever. In the last six months, Indian companies and African governments have struck secret packs for lithium mining, processing, and battery manufacturing. The headline number? Over $8 billion in proposed deals across five African nations not just to extract or, but to build the full chain of power inside Africa itself. For Washington, this is a striking danger. For Africa and India, it's a moment of reclamation. Let's set the stage. Lithium, the white gold of the 21st century. Every electric vehicle, every battery backup system, every energy storage grid depends on it. In recent years, the United States assumed it held the keys. Major American firms and allied supply chains processed lithium and controlled global pricing. But two things happened. One, demand exploded Africa's lithium belts in nations like Zimbabwe, Mali, and the Democratic Republic of Congo began to draw global attention. Two, India hungry for control and tired of dependency started, making discreet moves into Africa's lithium zones. What's unfolding now is a power play. By combining African raw reserves with Indian technology and capital, they are building a supply chain that can bypass US dominance altogether. Imagine this, a battery plant in Harare runs on lithium mined within 200 miles. A research lab in Bengaluru uses that same African lithium for next-generation energy storage. The finished battery modules then ship not to America but to Europe, Asia and Africa itself. When that becomes reality, the United States loses both market share and influence. It's not just about economics. It's about who controls the energy of tomorrow. Sources inside African mining ministries confirm that several memoranda of understanding moose were recently signed between Indian state-backed firms and governments in Zimbabwe, Mali, Zambia, and Namibia. These agreements demand local processing, local jobs, and profit sharing not simply shipping raw or to New York or Texas. At the same time, India's newly formed Critical Minerals Commission has earmarked billions for overseas investment targeting African lithium as a top priority. Officials in New Delhi believe this could cut India's reliance on foreign lithium imports by up to 75% by 2030. Washington is watching this quietly, as watching while writing internal memos about future supply risks and strategic endangerment. This story is about more than dollars. It's about power. For decades, the US told the world, we have the resources, we have the tech you are dependent on us. Now Africa and India are whispering a different narrative. We will own our resources, build our technologies, and decide our future. When America's monopoly over lithium is broken, Washington's ability to dictate terms in climate tech, electric mobility, even defense weakens. This is the future being contested right now in boardrooms, labs, and mining camps across two continents. This is why you're watching it. This is why leaders in Washington are sleepless, because what's happening isn't just trade. It's a tectonic shift in global power. So stay with me. In the next moments, we'll uncover the secret moose between India and African nations, how Africa is demanding full value, not just extraction, the ways the US is trying to block these moves, what this means for the global energy map and how you, the viewer, are witnessing a new era being born. The monopoly is about to end. The narrative is shifting. Let's continue. Africa holds some of the world's richest lithium belts. In Zimbabwe's Bikita mine, one of the oldest producers known lithium reserves are high-grade and increasingly in demand. In Mali and Burkina Faso, geologists estimate new deposits are waiting to be certified. Zambia too has begun preliminary surveys for lithium alongside. Its copper projects, what's changed? The global scramble no longer ignores these regions. India has now mapped a priority lithium corridor running from Zimbabwe to Mali connecting southern and western Africa via trade routes already in negotiation. The game is, map the land, secure rights, demand processing, and build the pipeline. Let me walk you through a few of the deals. Zimbabwe, Indian firm Indlith subsidiary. 
of a larger group has reportedly signed NMU to develop lithium extraction and refining capacity in collaboration with Zimbabwe's Ministry of Mines. The clause, at least 40% of the downstream product must stay in Zimbabwe for battery manufacturing. Mali, Indian engineers are assisting in geological surveys in the Tudini Basin, exploring lithium alongside existing gold fields. Namibia, Moose discuss integration of extraction sites with port and rail infrastructure to speed. Exports of value-added lithium products, Zambia, proposed partnerships to overlap lithium and cobalt zones, allowing India to co-develop dual mineral corridors. These are not speculative conversations documents and drafts have been shared across ministries. African officials confirm them. To understand how bold this move is, you must see how America built its lithium power, technological dominance, U.S. firms refined, patented, and controlled processing technologies, supply chain control. They locked deals in South America Chile, Argentina and Australia, integrating mining, processing, and export with U.S.-based companies. Diplomatic influence, U.S. foreign aid, military support, and development programs historically came tied with mineral partnerships. When all three elements align tech, supply, diplomacy monopoly isn't just about ownership. It's about authority. To lose that authority is a blow not just to profit, but to global dominance. When news of India-Africa lithium talks began trickling out, Washington moved quietly. Diplomatic cables, U.S. embassies in African capitals have reportedly flagged Indian deals as opaque and risky for national security, aid conditionality. There are proposals to link U.S. development aid to African nations if they avoid or renegotiate deals with Indian firms. Strategic summits, U.S. officials are pushing. A renewed mineral security pact a coalition of Western powers to secure trusted supply chains and compete with India. Media narrative, Western outlets recently ran pieces warning about Indian corporate risk and unstable African regulations framing India's moves as danger, not opportunity, but those tactics may already be too late. What's extraordinary is how African leaders are reacting, the tone is no longer submissive, it's demanding. In government memos, ministers have insisted on local processing mandates technology transfer for African engineers profit sharing and minority ownership by African states. Environmental safeguards and community consultations, these were demands rarely made during traditional Western-led mining deals. In many of the Indian moose, these terms are written in bold, it's not charity, it's power, India is not playing follower, it's overseas lithium diplomacy is a strategic pillar of energy independence. Through its National Critical Minerals Commission, India has allocated tens of billions in projected spending not just for domestic exploration but for overseas equity and joint ventures. They understand that their own battery industrial base needs stable, friendly sources. By investing in Africa, India secures that pipeline, builds alliances, and positions itself as a global leader in green energy not just a consumer. If this alliance works, global lithium trade routes reorient toward Africa-India channels. The U.S. loses its ability to dictate prices, regulations, and terms. African economies benefit from downstream manufacturing, job creation, and value capture. The multipolar energy order begins one where the center isn't Washington but many capitals, including Abuya, Harare, New Delhi. The long-held narrative that Africa is a supplier, not a maker, begins to shatter. Don't forget the people. African miners earning significantly higher wages in mineral towns because of local processing. Young engineers in Zambia teaming with Indian counterparts to design battery prototypes. Communities previously bearing the cost of extraction now having a stake in revenue. African nations gaining negotiating power, leverage, dignity. This is not abstract geopolitics, it's lives being changed. Already, narratives are rising suggesting this alliance is unstable, exploitative, or risky. Western media warns of debt traps. Opaque contracts, inexperienced Indian firms. When China practices similar deals, it's imperialism when India does, it's interference. Don't fall for it. Narrative control is a battlefield. The real story is one of empowerment. As viewers across Africa and India, you're watching a moment of history. What you share, talk about, and question matters. This alliance can influence. The jobs you get, the tech you use, the energy landscape you inherit. In the next part, I'll deliver the final chapters. A climactic showdown between Washington and this new alliance, the symbolic moments that define the shift, the call to awareness and action, but already know this. When India and Africa join forces over lithium, the world tilts, monopolies fade, Empires lose grip, voices rise. Now let's get real for a second. The United States isn't just worried about trade, it's terrified of losing control. 
because for decades, Washington dictated who could buy, sell, and refine the world's most valuable minerals, whether it was oil from the Middle East or gold from Africa, the system always worked one way America on top, everyone else underneath. But suddenly, Africa isn't playing that game anymore, and neither is India in late 2024. India quietly signed a 3.7 billion lithium development pact with Zimbabwe, and Namibia, two African nations that hold some of the richest and capped lithium reserves in the world. At first, Washington brushed it off. Oh, it's just India helping Africa, they said. But when those deals expanded into joint battery plants, local refining centers, and technology transfers, that's when the alarm bells went off. Because this wasn't aid, this was partnership. According to a Reuters report from December 2024, India's Mineral Development Corporation and Africa's Pan-African Mining Union agreed to co-develop lithium mines but with one condition, no Western intermediaries. That means the lithium is mined, processed, and sold directly between African and Indian companies. No. Middlemen in London. No approvals from Washington. No Wall Street banks taking their cut. And that is revolutionary. Think about it, lithium isn't just a mineral. It's the bloodline of the green economy. It powers electric cars, solar batteries, smartphones, even military technology. Whoever controls lithium controls the future. So when India and Africa teamed up to create what they're calling the South-South Lithium Corridor, the United States suddenly realized the future might not belong to Silicon Valley anymore. It might belong to Addis Ababa, Harare, and New Delhi. Now here's where things get spicy. Not long after the India-Africa Lithium Pact was announced, the U.S. launched a new campaign through the International Development Finance Corporation DFEC, offering strategic mining assistance to African states. Sounds innocent, right? But according to Bloomberg's analysis, that move was seen by many African leaders as a counterstrike, a way to reassert U.S. influence over critical minerals and push back against India's growing role. In other words, Washington wants Africa back under its thumb. But that's not how the new Africa thinks. Countries like Zimbabwe and Namibia have seen how resource partnerships used to work decades of extraction, little benefit for. The locals and all profits shipped abroad. This time, they're rewriting the script. Zimbabwe's mining minister, Winston Chitando, told the Economic Times of India, we will not export raw lithium anymore. We will process it here. We will create jobs here. That's not just economics. That's sovereignty. India, on the other hand, sees Africa as a strategic equal, not a pawn. It's offering technology transfers, training, programs, and joint venture factories exactly what African countries have been demanding for years. And while the West calls this debt trap diplomacy, the truth is simpler. India is helping Africa escape the monopoly. In fact, the first India-Africa lithium processing plant set to open in 2025 in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe will be fully run by African engineers trained in India's energy research institutes. The plant will refine up to 20,000 tons of lithium carbonate per year, enough to supply over a million electric vehicles annually, and guess what? None of that lithium will pass through the US, but let's not pretend America is just sitting quietly. Behind the scenes, Washington is pressuring African leaders through trade deals, sanctions, threats, and even media narratives portraying India's involvement as neo-colonialism with a friendly face. Yet here's the irony, the same. U.S. companies now scrambling for African lithium are the ones that ignored the continent for decades. Tesla, General Motors, and Ford all depend on lithium imports most from South America, Australia, or China. Africa's potential was never on their radar, until now because suddenly they see that Africa isn't just rising, it's uniting. And it's doing so with new allies like India who understand what it means to break free from Western control. So when you hear Washington officials say we're concerned about transparency, what they really mean is we're losing control of the supply chain. When they say Africa should protect its resources responsibly, they really mean don't give it to India. And when they say the global market must stay open, what they're actually saying is keep it open for us. This india africa lithium partnership isn't just an economic move. It's a geopolitical earthquake. It's proof that the global south no longer needs permission to grow. It's a declaration that technology, innovation, and power can emerge from the very places once dismissed as developing. And that's exactly why the U.S. is nervous. Because this alliance threatens to end America's monopoly on not just lithium but influence. The story doesn't end here. Because next, we'll dive into how this partnership could reshape the global energy market, how China is watching silently from the sidelines, and why African nations might just become the new center of global power.